Okay, uh, if there's no other question, let's thank our speaker. So, next up, um, we have Mohit, um, and he will present about uh, formal analysis to actually uncover some attacks in Bluetooth pairing. Um, and he is a PhD candidate in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the Ohio State University. And his advisor is Professor Seekian Lin. And his research interests involve um, different areas of security and privacy, including formal methods here, and also cryptography and protocol security. So when you're, when you're ready, you can start. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mohit Kumar Jangir. And it is our honor to present our work about extrapolating for my analysis to uncover attacks in Bluetooth passkey entry pairing. This is a joint work with my colleague, uh, U.S. Zheng, and my advisor, Dr. Jishang Lin. So let's start with the background of Bluetooth. As you would usually see any two devices trying to connect uh, for, with the Bluetooth, they would show uh, a passcode on both of the devices and the user can press yes and no prompts to finish the connection. And such pairing is called numeric comparison. In the cases when one of the devices cannot show a display, the user can enter the displayed passcode. And such pairing is called passkey entry. And there are plenty of such use cases, uh, such as headphones and speaker, et cetera. And Bluetooth defines two other pairing protocol called just works and out of band. But these are not considered secure because uh, they are either vulnerable to MIT attack or their security depends on the individual implementation. And there is a general principle in protocol security is that if you want to establish any uh, authenticated connection between two parties, then there has to exist a secure channel already before the, the new connection. And, and in Bluetooth case, this is the human interaction either in, in the form of looking at both of the devices, pressing yes and no prompts, or entering the passcode. So let's see how secure our Bluetooth connection. In the past decades, we have seen uh, many, uh, many attacks in the Bluetooth, ranging from uh, distributed account accountability of permissions, uh, reconnection procedures, and dynamic profile switching, and et cetera. And there are m many other papers. And their impacts are huge because billions of Bluetooth devices are being launched. And this number is, is growing every year. So the research question is, how can we systematically and rigorously reason about these systems? We believe that formal method is a promising direction because of three unique properties. First is that formal methods can reason about a complete model system state in comparison to a few test cases. It can reason about not only the presence of bugs, like fuzzing and testing tools, but it can reason about absence of bugs in the form of proofs. And user has a lot of uh, flexibility and variability in customizing the system environment. And for the two pairing uh, processes that I've shown, uh, I just mentioned, numeric comparison has been manually and formally analyzed. But passkey entry has only been uh, manually analyzed. And that's where our research comes in, to formally analyze passkey entry. And we leverage a state-of-art uh, symbolic verification tool called Taman Prover. It takes protocol uh, as protocol representation in the form of multi-set rewriting rules and security property as first-order logic. And with its uh, verification engine, it can yield whether it's security property verifies the protocol execution or not. And when, when someone tries to model a particular system or a protocol, it, it is not only that the protocol sequence and security properties are modeled, but, but there is a, uh, the user can add his own custom thread assumptions and can customize protocol environment. Uh, for example, in Bluetooth case, it could be how device ownerships are structured and human interaction work in the Bluetooth and et cetera. So then the a verifier builds a whole infrastructure. And then we need a strategy to design an efficient infrastructure. And our strategy was to target an ideal attack. Method confusion attack is such a state-of-art attack 
which involves parallel pass key entry and numeric comparison instances, asymmetric human interactions, loops and bit call calculations. So then with that, our hypothesis was that if we target a comprehensive attack, we will be able to build a thorough and precise model, which gives us access to a large attack surface to explore, and finally to discover large classes of attack. So before I talk about the key design ideas in our work, I'll give you a brief about what is in our model. So numeric comparison uh, behind the scenes has various phases. And I do not expect you to understand those details, but I'll go at, at a very high level of what do these phases do. Beginning with two devices discovering, with discovering each other and sharing the public component of their keys, the authentication phase begins, where both of the devices generate a random nonce, and then they exchange the public components and this uh, with the keys as these nonce, and then they calculate a same passcode on the both of the devices. And then the user is given choice to press yes and no whether those passcode matches or not. And if the user uh, completes that part, then the uh, shared key is calculated on the both side, and then there is another authentication phase which verifies that the, all the exchanges that happened before are correct. And after that, the data can begin transmission, transmitting. Uh, the passkey entry has a similar structure, but the authentication phase is a little different. Here, one device generates this passcode, and the other device has to enter this passcode. And because the passcode is 20 bit long, the Bluetooth designs 20 different iterations to transmit each bit of the passcode in each iteration, consisting of, again, nonces, CMAC of those values. Uh, and then this design of this 20 iteration was made because, uh, because it, the Bluetooth wanted to harden the probability on, of an attacker to compromise the security of passkey entry. Uh, and then the rest of the phases, uh, key calculation, authentication phase two, are the same as numeric comparison. So let's see our, the, the, our targeted attack. And this targeted attack does not compromise the security of individual protocol. But then it cross-pollinates the passcode from one pairing process to another pairing process when both of the pairings are running in parallel. And it exploits the fact that user may get confused in, uh, in checking at the prompts which are presented to the user. And in this way, it compromises, comp compromises the security of all individual uh, protocols. So with this way, we were able to build uh, a thorough and precise model with parallel numeric comparison and passkey entry pairing and various sub-configuration within the passkey entry pairing process. And our model instantiate unbounded number of users, uh, devices, and that structure to provide strong guarantees. And with complex model comes complex challenges and verification. So we had to uh, encounter a lot of non-termination with, uh, with heavy uh, details involved in the, in the protocols. We had to deal with parsing very large traces and also deal with unconventional abstraction. And I'll give you an example as I go uh, forward. And scalability in general is, is a very big challenge for follower methods. And with our key design ideas, I'll, uh, I'll explain how we use our, our ideas to, uh, to manage this scalability, starting from the long pairing sequences. So if you consider each pairing processes uh, as, as an exchange between initiator and responder, with the blue, th blue thread representing passkey entry, the red thread representing numeric comparison, then we use a divide and conquer approach where we model uh, different components of individual protocols. We verify them separately for both of the pairing processes. And then we merge the verified component. And then we merge both of the pairing process all together. And as I uh, explained, uh, some of the phases in these pairing processes has similar uh, calculations. So then we merge all those similar calculations into one template and then we branch off the distinct operation. And in this way, we reduce a lot of syntactic overload in, the, in our modeling. 
Uh, another thing we managed is the burdens that is caused by different equational theory operations. So in, I think this, uh, this T does not work, but I think I can see. So another uh, way we manage uh, is, if you observe the inbuilt Diffie-Elman equation theory, it provides the properties of uh, discrete logarithm hardness, uh, logarithm operations, and group theory. And although these, these uh, properties for a model is great, but then the, 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 the attack, the, the crypto misuse attack, the feature that they provide, is out of the scope of our, of our model. And further, they add a lot of burden to the verification process. So we, de so we define our own Diffie-Hellman equational theory with assuming that the logarithm and group theory operations, sorry, group theory operations are, um, are assumed perfect. And uh, to talk about the uh, constant heavy security properties, uh, the standard authentication lemmas has a lot of constraints of uh, correspondence between the, the different events and how uh, the uniqueness of these events is reasoned in the properties and what an adversary can have and, and what not. In order to deal with these heavy constraint, we devised a very minimal constant lemma, which is sufficient enough to derive a, a authentication failure, but then also it allows us to prove the smaller constant lemma and then adding that to finally prove the, uh, the the complex constant lemma eventually. And we also had to deal with very large traces, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. And the, the small snapshot on the top has a lot of variables to uncover. And we had to lay out with pen and paper uh, a succinct representation of, of the attack traces, where we mark the critical checkpoints and, uh, and critical variables in it. And then we follow along the adversary actions as represented in the trace to finally figure out the root causes of these attacks. To give you an example of unconventional abstraction, consider the uh, Pasky entry pairing where the, in, the, in the authentication phase, the both of the devices generate the nonces and then uses CMAC uh, to exchange the messages. And then the, the, these nonces are then exchanged later. But then because Tamarin is a, a symbolic verification tool, as an adversary, it is not possible for him to unpack any hashed values in the form of CMAC. But then, uh, although we are catching the literal accuracy of the protocol in the model, we are losing the semantic uh, property where because the passkey entry uh, transmit only one bit of the uh, of the passcode, the, the intruder can easily brute force these bit values. And to, in order to tackle this, we provide a guessable abstraction which keeps the properties of the hash uh, the ha the CMAC uh, cryptography, but then it also allows an intruder to derive those easily brute forceable values from the protocol. And encryption is such an equivalent uh, abstraction. And in this way, we were able to build a single robust model. As a result, we uh, discover five different attacks. And even before discovering our targeted attack, we discover an existing uh, static pa passcode attack, which was discovered in 2018. It is a convenience feature which resulted into technical vulnerability. And it is based upon freshness attack. Our second authentication failure resulted into a new attack vector called group casing attack. It is a build up upon the static passcode attack where if the Bluetooth device uses uh, different threads to connect to other Bluetooth devices, and it, if it also uses a non-threads of random function, then an adversary can launch parallel devices, uh, 20, uh, 21 parallel devices to, to finally derive the the, the passcode and eventually break the security of the passkey entry. And that more details of this attack can be seen into our paper. Our third authentication failure uh, result into reflection and typing attack. It exploits the fact that, fact that uh, the Bluetooth passkey entry also 
has uniform and symmetrical uh, verification computations. And yes, we get our, our targeted method confusion attack, but then we, get, we, uh, we go one step further by allowing the compromised devices functionality into our model. In, in here, uh, we allow one of the user devices to, uh, to, to have a malicious uh, application in it. And then if the, if the user is using passkey entry in his, in his devices, then the, the, an adversary can use uh, the symmetrical devices at the, at the time of connection initiation in such a way that the user will be confused whether his devices are connecting with each other or with the symmetric devices of an intruder. And it exploits the fact that, uh, that when entering the passkey entry passcode, it is hard for an, an, an user to see where the passcodes are going. And to summarize, with one single robust model, we derive five different attacks. And overall, our uh, model uh, verifies the confidentiality and authentication properties uh, of the pairing protocols. And it takes about one and a half day to complete the verification. And whereas the attack, uh, attack traces can be discovered within a few hours. To conclude, we present an in-depth formal model for Bluetooth pairing. And such, such a model can coexist with the updates in the Bluetooth specification. We uh, suggest that a, a systematic and principled approach of formal methods can discover large classes of attack. And we provide insights to, uh, to tackle the, one of the challenges of formal model, uh, which is scalability. Our Tamarin model are available at GitHub. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Hi, Ivan Oliveira from RIT. Great talk. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, there's a, there's a part of your uh, verification approach where you kind of break the protocol down into smaller pieces, and then you could verify them individually, and then you compose them somehow. Could you uh, could this cause some kind of uh, could this miss some kind of corner case in the composition of the individual building blocks that you verify separately? Well, yes, that is true that, uh, that when combining to verify the component, you, you, you have to verify the combination part as well. But when, when I say when we combine those together, I, I verify them individually in order to make sure that the individual parts are, are verified, but then I, I verify the, the combined part together so that we don't have to rely on the individual verification. I see. And then another curiosity, how do you model and tamarind the, the case where the, the device can be infected, right? The device says uh, it's malicious to you. Just send the, you know, you, you send those, the, the, that device's secrets to the network or to the, the yeah, layout to the, version? To the adversary in the public network. Uh, yes. To just imitate what, what is possible with the, the malicious applications. I see. Thank you very much. Nice talk, thank you. Uh, I had a question about, so some, we mentioned that some of the tamarind traces can be like very long. Right. And how do we convert from that long trace to a uh, more uh, human and a readable format? And how long does it take? And what is, uh, how hard is it from a perspective of looking at those traces? Thank you. Um, I think uh, in terms of the hardness, uh, it is not, Difficult in terms of looking at the looking at each of the, the states of the model and then following the adverse reactions. But then, if the traces are too large to to just look at from the bird eye uh, bird eye view and then figure out the root causes, uh, and then we in, in all cases these these are very huge traces. So uh, initially, initially it took me about uh, about three four days to to finally uh, to, to get an individual component of the trace into one pen and paper, and then remove all, all the unnecessary variables in it. But then over the time, when, when I had to reiterate on the verification process, I could, I could uh, immediately not notice the critical variables into the trace to figure out the root causes. Uh, so initially, it took, it took us about three, four days for each traces when the, tra when the model results produces a uh, trace, but 
But uh, in the later phases, we were able to figure them out within a day. Well, I guess my follow-up question is that um, how many traces like have you discovered, and like um, are there like duplicate traces that maybe um, you have to um, combine it into a single trace or something? Well, no, uh, because we have one one model which combines both of the, the A processes. So, uh, so we get each trace, uh, each attack trace for each of the model. And although we, I, when I say that uh, we have to betray uh, multiple times in order to refine the model and make sure that the traces are exact uh, exact root causes as presented in the model, uh, so we have uh, each attack trace corresponding to each attack and we, we and for the proofs we have a textual proof uh, for the confidential authentication.